All right, guys, this is the review for the second, actually, for the retake of the test. All right, so this is a long review. We're going to go through as much as we can. Uh, the first part, the first uh, set of questions say factor out the GCF. So you need to look at every single term and see what's in common. So when you think of 8, 12, and 32, uh, you know that there's a multiple of 2, but there's a greater value that you could factor out. That's the multiple of 4. So let's pull out a 4, but in addition to the 4, we also have an A, an A, and an A. So we could pull out at least one A. And we also have Bs. We have a B to the third, a B to the second, and a B to the fifth. So if you have three here, and two here, and five here, what's the maximum amount of Bs you could pull out of all the terms at the same time? That would be two, right? If you're confused about this, think about this. You have three Bs right here. You could pull out three Bs. And you could pull out three Bs from here, too, but you can't pull out three Bs from here. There's only two of them here. Or you can't look at the biggest one. There's five Bs here. You could pull out five from here, but you can't pull them out from these two because there's not enough Bs. So the greatest amount of Bs you could pull out of all terms at the same time is B to the second. Okay, anyhow, that is your GCF. And if you do pull out that GCF, what would be left on the inside? Well, it's like reverse distributive property, right? Uh, 4AB squared times what will get you the 8AB to the third? Well, how about 4 times what gets you 8? 4 times 2 gets you 8. And then A times 1 will give you A. You don't have to put the 1. And B squared times B will get you B to the third. So we need to put a B right in there. And that would be the first term inside of the parentheses. And then we go 4AB squared times what will get us a 12AB to the second. Let's start with 4 times what gets us positive 12. 4 times positive 3 gets us positive 12. And then A times 1 will get us that A, so we don't have to worry about it. And B squared times 1 will get us B squared, so we don't have to worry about it. So the middle term there is just the number 3. And at the very end, we're going to go 4AB squared times what will get us this term. So let's start with the 4. 4 times what gets us negative 32? 4 times negative 8 gets us negative 32. And then the A, A times what gets us A? It's already A, so times 1. You don't need to put it there. Um, B squared times what will get you a B to the fifth? That would be a B to the third. So your third term inside of the parentheses is eight, negative 8B eight to the third, or minus 8B to the third. And ladies and gentlemen, that is our final factored form on number 1. Let's move on to number 2. Again, we're going to pull out the GCF, so we need to look at both terms. It's a little easier because there's only two terms here. Um, the 6 and the 9, what's the greatest common factor you could pull out of there? Uh, multiple of 3. So we're going to pull out a 3. And then we look at the letters. Is there R's in both? Absolutely. There's 2 here and there's 3 here. So what's the maximum we could pull out at the same time? Again, 2 here, 3 here. You could pull out 2 from here and you could pull out 2 from here. So let's pull out R squared. That's your greatest common factor, 3R squared. And what about t's? We also have a t here and a t here, so we could definitely pull out one of those t's in each of the terms. So there is our GCF. Our GCF is 3r squared t. So 3r squared t times what will get us the 6r squared t? Uh, 3 times what will get us 6? 3 times 2 will get us 6. And of course, the rest, the r squared t is already there. Okay, so we don't have to do anything else. Let's move on to the next term. 3 times what gets us a minus 9? Well, that would be a minus 3. Uh, but what about the rest? r squared times what will get us an r to the third? Well, I know I need an r right here. So let's put that r. And t times what gets us t? Well, t times 1, so you don't even have to put the 1. Uh, when I say you don't have to put the 1, think about it. If I put a times 1 right there, what would 3r times 1 be? It would still be 3r. So putting the 1 is totally pointless. That's why I say don't worry about it. Anyhow, that's your factored form right there. Let's move on to number 3. Three terms, a little bit harder, no problem. Let's look at the, the coefficients, the 8, the 20, and the 4. What's the common multiple there? The number 4. And what else? We also have 5x's here, 2x's here, and 3x's over here. So 
let's pull out the greatest amount of x's we could pull out from all terms at the same time, and that would be x squared. So 4x squared is our GCF. What would be left on the inside? Again, we're thinking 4x squared times what will get us an 8x to the fifth. Okay, 4 times what gets us 8? Well, 4 times 2 gets us 8. How about x squared times how many more x's to get x to the fifth? Well, x squared times x to the third will be x to the fifth. And over here, uh, 4 squared or 4 x squared times what will get us negative 20 x squared? Again, start with the number 4 times what gets us minus 20. 4 times minus 5 gets us minus 20. And x squared times what gets us x squared? x squared times 1 gets us x squared, so I don't need to worry about putting a 1 right there because it'll still be 5. Anyhow, let's uh, move on uh, to the last one. 4x squared times what gets us a positive 4x to the third? Well, 4 times what gets us 4? Four, 4 times 1. If you want, you could put the 1. You don't have to, but I am just for fun right now. Put the 1 right there. And then how about the x squared times what gets us x to the third? x squared times another x will get us x to the third. So that third term is 1x. And like I said before, you don't need this one. You could, uh, you could uh, erase it if you want. I'm going to leave it there. But you could leave it as uh, 4x squared parentheses 2x to the third minus 5 plus x. You don't really need the 1. I'm going to leave it there. Let's move on to the next one. Number four, back to a binomial, okay? Let's look at both uh, terms. What's in common? There's a six and a nine, so we could pull out a three. And we also have an x right here and an x right here, so let's definitely pull out that x from both of those. So I have a three x so far. And we also have y's. I have a one y here and I have three y's over here. So the maximum amount of y's I could pull out from both of these guys at the same time is just one single y. So that is my GCF. Then you put the parentheses, and then you figure out what belongs inside the parentheses. 3xy times what gets a 6xy? Let's start with the numbers. 3 times what gets a 6? That's pretty easy. That is 2. And then x times what gets us x? 1. So you don't need to put a 1 right there, because 2 times 1 is still 2. And then y times what gets us y? That'll be another 1, but you don't have to. It's just 2 anyway. And let's move on to the next one. 3xy times what gets us a negative 9xy to the third, starting with 3. 3 times what is negative 9? 3 times negative 3 is negative 9. And then you think x times what is x? x times 1. You don't need to put the 1. y times what is y to the third? That would be y squared. And ladies and gentlemen, we are done. That's your factored form on number 4. Let's move on. Factoring quadratics that have a equal to 1. I love these. They're super easy. What do I mean by a equals 1? See, there's no number in the front. There's no number in the front. I mean, on all these, there's no number in the front of the variable squared. Now, that makes it beautiful. Why is that? Because you could automatically set up the factored form format and put an x right here and an x right there. And again, why am I able to do this? Because x times x is x squared. See how it works out nicely when there's no number in the front? If you had a 6, then you'd probably have a 2 right here and a 3 right there, or maybe a 6 and a 1. You know, it gets complicated when you have a number. That's where we have to follow those multi-step uh, process that, that we already learned. Anyhow, right here, you set this up, and all you do is think, what times what is the c value that if you combine together is the b value? So we're thinking, what times what is negative 24 that if I combine together is positive 10? You might have to make a list what? to make this easier for you. So instead of negative 24, let's just make a list. Negative 1 times 24, negative 2 times 12, negative 3 times 8, negative 4 times 6. Those are all the possible ways of getting negative 24. And if we start combining the numbers, like if you combine this uh, first one right here, uh, 24 and negative 1, that'll give you a 23. And obviously, the b value is not 23, it's 10, so that didn't work. Combine 12 and negative 2, that does work. If you combine it, it does give you positive 10. So we know that this is the pair of numbers that we want, the negative 2 and the positive 12. And go ahead and write that in, negative 2 and positive 12. And that is your factored form. If you have time at the end of the test, you could come back and distribute 
distribute and then combine like terms and you'll see that it really does give you that above quadratic trinomial. Let's move on to number six. So once again, we are thinking what times what is C, which is over here, negative 28, that if you combine gives you B, which is right here, positive three. Of course, the A value is one. That's why we're able to set this up. Whenever the A value is one, we're able to set this up, put the N right there, the N right there, and we're ready to go. So at this point, you just think, what times what is negative 28 that if you add together is positive three? If you don't see it right off the bat, uh, go ahead and make a list. Negative one times 28. Negative two times 14. Negative three times doesn't work. Negative four times seven. And that's about it. Those are all the possible ways of uh, getting negative 28. Now, which pair of numbers combines together to give you the B value, which is positive three? Right here, positive three. So if you combine negative 1 and 28, 28 minus 1 is 27. That did not work because the middle value does not say 27. Then you move on to the next one, 4 minus 2. If you combine that, 14 minus 2, you get 12. The B value is not 12, so that didn't work. And right here is our winner. Negative 4 times 7 is negative 28. And if I add it together, it really is positive 3. And that's the correct pair of numbers, minus 4 and positive seven, and I'm done. Now let's say this would have been a, uh, or this would have been a negative three, okay? Then you'd have to change those signs to, to make it be that correct middle value. Well, I'm sure we'll get to some examples like that in a bit. Let's move on to number seven. Number seven, once again, the A value is one, which means you could set this up and simply think what times what is negative 24 that if you combine together is negative 11. Let me make a list, negative one times 24. Again, don't just look at 24. You have to look at the sign in front as well, okay? So negative 24 is what we're looking for. So making the list, negative one times 24, negative two times 12, negative three times eight, negative four times six. Those are all the possible ways of getting negative 24. And if you start combining them, like the first one, 24 take away one, that's 23. 12 take away two, that's 10. And notice, we want the B value of negative 11. Eight take away three, that's five, that didn't work. Four take away, or negative four plus six, that's two, that didn't work. Nothing works. What? So what do we, what do we say here? Prime, that's what we say. What does prime mean? It means not factorable. Okay, you can't, you can't do it, you can't factor it. Moving on to number eight. Okay, once again, the A value is one, so let's set it up, ready to rock. And we're gonna think what times what is the C value, negative 72, that if I combine together is the B value, negative 34. Let's make a list. How can I get negative 72 with multiplication? Negative one times 72. Negative two times, and if you don't know, off the top of your head, get a calculator and divide 72 by two, and it'll be 36. And negative three times, wait a minute, if I'm looking at the pair of numbers as I go, I already know that this is the pair of numbers that I want because when I combine 36 minus two, I get 34. Now, notice that the B value is negative 34, so I have the right number, I just have the wrong sign, which means I have the right numbers, I just have the wrong signs. So let's change that negative two to a positive two and change that 36 to a negative 36. That way I really do get that negative 34 when I combine it, which is the B value that I want. Okay, so let's take those numbers, positive two and negative 36 and plug it in and I'm done, all right? So there was no need to continue with my list because I already saw the two and the 36 subtracted, giving me the 34. So I stopped right there instead of continuing with the long, long list. You may need to continue with the long list if, you, uh, if the B value were different. 